Arctic. Today we're off to Bangkok, Thailand to watch as our Indigenous women's rugby team compete at the international level. They call themselves the Lloydies after their idol Lloyd McDermott who was not only the first Aboriginal person to play for the Wallabies, Australia's rugby team, but who was also our first Indigenous barrister. So sit back and get ready to cheer and fire up for the Lloydies as they take on the rest of the world. Well, they say rugby league's a... Uh a gentleman's game played by bastards, but rugby union's a bastard's game played by gentlemen. Favourite thing about playing rugby union is you get the hit someone and you're allowed to and you walk away from it not getting charged. <laughs> not just that, I mean it's, it's a great physical sport, it's a great way to run out any stresses, any anger, anything. This women's team has been set up by Lloyd McDermott to encourage young Indigenous Australians to play rugby. <laughs> rugby union is steeped in white man's history. It was a sport that originated in England and played only in elite private schools. It will be many years before Aboriginal people would play the sport as well. There wasn't a lot of rugby. Our heroes were the boxers, the fighters, like the Dave Sanders and the, the Ellie Bennetts. And the, I actually wanted to be a boxer. Oh, I had the perfect record. I lost four out of four, so my dad told me to try another sport. I grew up in central Queensland. I was fortunate, not because we had money, but I won a church scholarship to an Anglican church school in Brisbane. And most of the private schools played rugby. So that's how I got my introduction into rugby union. In 1962, Lloyd McDermott played for the Wallabies and was the first Aboriginal to represent Australia in rugby union. The Lloyd McDermott rugby development team started from a, a beer that I was having with Lloyd McDermott. Uh, we were at a function at, uh, at, at Glebe, uh, I think it was the Bangara Dance Theatre was having a function and it was the first time I met Lloyd, it was about 13 years ago. Uh, and we were just talking about we've got to get more Aboriginals playing for Australia, you know, we've got to get more Aboriginals playing rugby. Gary Ella and his two brothers also played rugby for Australia in the 1970s. We got the Lloyd McDermott development team together because we thought it was a national disgrace that at the time only five Aboriginals had represented Australia. The three Ellers, Lloyd Walker and myself. So we decided to try and take the game of rugby union to the Aboriginal uh, youth. In November 2005, Lloyd sent two young teams to Thailand for the International Bangkok Sevens Rugby Tournament. We can always remember the day that our passports arrived in the mail, that we were sort of pushed for time to get our passports, so it was all anxious out in the bush, waiting for the mailman to come. Blue Stadium, oh. we'll play football. Rugby. Oh, okay. Rugby sevens. Okay, can you take us here? I, I never actually thought that I'd have a passport um, this, this soon. Um, however, it was a wish of mine to travel. Um, so with that passport, uh, a couple of weeks after I received it, or we all received them. She was still looking at it. <laughs> Couldn't believe that she had it. <laughs> Our team's made up not only from people from New South Wales, we've got players from Northern Territory, Cairns, Canberra, Wollongong, here in Sydney, um, us from the bush. We used to play touch footy at school, but um, other than that, we haven't added much rugby, especially rugby union.
I guess we were a bunch of girls that run off a netball court. A couple of our girls were approached by um, some guys from our local rugby team and um, asked us would we like to have a game out there. Um, so we finished our game of netball once we got everything organised and we ran off the netball court onto the football field and had our first game. Yeah, they were laughing at us at the start of it. They thought, like, we were just a big joke. This is a day out, we're going out of a laugh at a few girls hit each other. But when we started winning, they just thought, sort of just started coming behind us. They called our coach a minibus, half a coach. But when he started winning, they all sort of wanted to help him out a yeah. bit and jump in. And, um, but yeah, they all sort of got behind us and after we started winning games, the grounds were packed. I think the biggest buzz is the kids. You walk off the field and they're tapping you on the back, saying good game, like little, little Aboriginal kids. Like, and you think, you know, I've done something for them. You know, that's something they can start off, you know? They can follow in my footsteps. Australia's animal life differs in many ways from that of all other countries. In 1962, when I played for Australia and Rugby Union, we weren't called Aboriginal. We were just darkies or bongs or blackfellas in those days. Uh, we, as a matter of law, we were regarded as part of the flora and fauna of the country. It wasn't until 1967, that, uh, when the referendum, that any sense of Aboriginality was acknowledged by the Australian government. So we were regarded like the trees and the, the animals. So I guess literally I was a wallaby. In 1962, after only one year with the Australian Wallabies, Lloyd McDermott withdrew from the team. I was part of a squad from Queensland and New South Wales who were under consideration uh, to tour South Africa in 1963. I realised that I was in a no-win situation because I would have had to have been an honorary white for the period of the tour in South Africa. Uh, so I, I, I withdrew, resigned from rugby union and, and, and then played rugby league in 1963. In South Africa, the only way people with brown skin were allowed any freedom was to become an honorary white. In Australia, Aboriginal people lived under similar social and legal restrictions. The laws were designed to protect Aboriginal people, which included curfews, withheld wages, and segregated shops, pubs, and cinemas. To be free, people were expected to give up their past so they could slip into white society. Well, I was a pretty normal, wild, young Aboriginal boy growing up in Queensland in, in the late 50s and 60s, and I got into my share of trouble, you know, marching for our people's rights, and I got, you know, thrown into the cells and had arguments with the police. I realised that there was a need for an Aboriginal lawyer around, and so that's how I decided to study law. I wanted to make a contribution to the well-being of our people. Lloyd McDermott went on to become Australia's first Aboriginal barrister. In my time as a practising barrister, I've found that the system doesn't cater for Aboriginality. It caters for the white middle class and the aristocracy. In fact, one judge is reputed to have said that the standards of the bar was being lowered by allowing Asians and foreigners and Aboriginals into the bar. That statement was made when I was a junior barrister. Every morning, just across the bay from where Captain Cook landed, three young Aborigines begin a ritual. A ritual of play that's helped make them masters of a white man's game. The Ella brothers have made Australian sporting history. For the first time, three brothers are in an overseas touring team. 
Yeah, well, I grew up in a, an Aboriginal community at La Perouse, you know, and we had a, a very large family with 12 kids, seven boys and, and five girls in the family. But it, it just seemed that every house next door to us were all cousins and all had a lot of kids, particularly, particularly boys. Uh, you know, every afternoon just finished up in one massive game of touch football. In 1977, the boys turned the tables and invaded Britain in the unbeatable Australian schoolboys side. Going for a school, particularly for high school, it was a Matchable High was a rugby school. And towards that, in year 12, there was a tour to the United Kingdom with, uh, with Australian schoolboys. And at that stage, they said, if you're playing league, you know, it's unlikely that you'll be selected. So at that stage, we thought, well, we'd give Union a go and see how we go with the selections. And eventually, I got, I got chosen with uh, my two brothers, Glenn and Mark. You know, three Aboriginal kids going away with a national team certainly made the bit of headlines around the place. I remember my first test try at Wellington. Got a pass from David Campisi, who was also playing in his second test. They've won it. It's a try for Australia. Uh, that always stands out because uh, just laying on the ball and over the try line and thinking, well, I've made it now. Uh, against the All Blacks that was, that was fantastic. The reason why I wanted to encourage Aboriginal kids to play the sport was from what I've seen Mark Lane and Gary do on the field. And it wasn't just them, but there was other guys who played at the same time from the same area. There's, a, there's about half a dozen guys, all from La Perouse, who played the game like they were playing touch football down in the mission. Aboriginal people have a, a freedom when they get on the football field that I think rugby union really benefits from. You know, a lot of rugby players are still coming from the private schools and there's not many Aboriginal kids in private schools these days. Uh, but that's increasing as well. Um, you know, and, and the opportunities are there, and I think that more Aboriginal people are, are looking as, as rugby as an opportunity for not just to play a sport, but also for their career options. I wasn't exceptional, but I was disciplined, and I trained hard, and I had a mental approach which was able to help me succeed. And most Aboriginal girls and boys are very talented in sport. And just give it their best shot and uh, I'm quite sure the rewards will come. After the first game we just sort of all picked ourselves up and we've won every game since and lost in the semi-finals. We thought we were just going to go over there and get flogged. But there was two original sides over there and the way they backed each other up, it was just unreal. Yeah. And there was also two, um, two Sydney sides over there which stuck together too, so we're all basically there together. I don't really care if you're white or black or any person discrimination act. If you're mean or fake or just blank slack, I'll wipe you off with a sweat on my crack. We seem to just play netball and, and that sort of stuff and maybe a bit of touch football. But when you start jumping over to those masculine sort of sports, well then comes this other stereotypes, you know, and for some women that's hard. Um, however, we handle it pretty well at home and, and the support that we have out at Canemal is just unreal. Our whole community um, basically get behind us. We don't have a lot out that way, it's very isolated. So when there's a sporting event on out, out our way, you know, like it's um, like a, a social get together, like a social gathering, bringing everyone, to get, everyone together. Bangkok um, was also a culture shock in itself. Um, you know, we see what we come from here in Australia and yeah, you go over to somewhere like uh, Bangkok and, and realise, well, we are fortunate to live in Australia. You know, and I guess we are even more fortunate because we are the original owners of the land Australia. You know, and that, you, you play on that field with even more pride when you know that over there.
I did experience racism, mainly at the club level, not so much at the international levels, because a lot of the international players were Maoris and Fijians and they were black. But I was called names, which only what spurred me on to, to play better. Mark and Glenn, 22-year-old twins, and Gary Ella, 21, have done for rugby union what the West Indian did for cricket. In their selection for the present Wallaby tour of Britain, the three brothers have rewritten the record book, bringing credit to their Ranwick club and great pride to Aborigines everywhere. The racism part comes into it, it uh, doesn't matter where you are, you know. There's a lot of things that are said on the field that, uh, that remain on the field. There's a, there's, there's a lot of uh, actions that happen off the field, which I think are the more, most upsetting of the lot. You know, we played with a very successful side, so teams that tried to, to taunt us uh, on a racial basis generally fi finished up well behind on the scoreboard, so, you know, we used to, we used to give it back as well. Can Randwick get this loose ball? Maxwell got it. Knox, a chance for Randwick. Gary Ella. It's a sad point to say um, that we have experienced racism um, in our short time um, that we've been playing rugby. Um, and I guess it's, it, it has happened on more than one occasion. Um, but that doesn't bring us down. The thing is it empowers us to um, play that little bit harder and play with that in mind, knowing that, you know, our people fought hard to get us where we are today. Like, you're up ten more paces when you're playing for Lloydies. Like, you you got to take it up, because you're not only representing yourself, you're rep representing your people. You just feel so strong when you step on that field and every step you take, you step with, with pride and you step with honour. Hopefully one day our girls and our future generations will have those opportunities just like the boys that have now, you know, like with the scholarships going to the private schooling, you know, and that sort of stuff because we have people out there, have girls out there with the potential. I've found that if Aboriginal people participate in sports, it can help bring down barriers, racial barriers, and be part of the teamship. And, and I think the Aboriginal sports people who've succeeded at the highest levels have helped bridge that gap uh, for human rights as it applies to Aboriginals. We need our radicals, we've needed our marches, but I think the sports factor is, 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 is probably more prevalent. Next up, we've got a short film about the history of Indigenous registered nurses. Absolutely amazing.